Conference of Cosmic Agency. My name is Gosha, and today I'm going to continue with you the topic of memories. Because last time we talked about soul traps and memory amnesia machines and things like that. So I found two interesting conversations here. First one with Athena and then with Yaski on the topic of memory. And we'll continue a little bit in that direction. Uh, many people complain that they do not remember things from their past lives, from their 5D identities and what they did and uh, who they were. Matthias, for example, is one of them and he always claims, maybe not so much now, but he always used to claim that if he remembered more about his identity and what he used to do before he came here, then it will give him some sort of direction to know more about what he should be doing now. Because if he was an expert and, and skilled at something and it was his hobby and passion, then it would help him discover it now. It could guide him. And so that's what some people think. Now we could talk about this a long time and approach this from different angles. But for me, not remembering is actually relaxing. Yes, I would love to remember things, especially because I feel it would help me to do my job better because then I would know things myself and I could access that information myself. Uh, but it's relaxing because let's remember a lot of these memories sometimes are very painful, very hard. There are a lot of situations, there are complications. And, you know, maybe sometimes you need a little mental break from all that. And especially those of you star states who have been um, on Earth, around Earth, Earth cycles for a long time. And that's very probable because if you are here now, it's probably not your first time. So you might have had difficult deaths, different difficult experiences, challenging lives in and out of Earth. So to remember all that and to remember your, your deeper things uh, could be could be challenging could be challenging and I feel it's relaxing for me now to not to remember some of that but like I said I would love to remember uh, some more details about out out of earth life take it alive because then I could tell you more and I wouldn't have to rely on on the Toleka crew to give me answers to some of these questions and yes, some of you will say there's always knowledge within you and you can access that yourself. It's always there. Well, in my case, it's hard to access that. Um, I am accessing more abstract ideas and metaphysical concepts and all that. I feel it. But if it's something more technical, uh, like, you know, engines of the ships, I feel I don't have the access to that exactly. And and also it depends on your mm, immersion pod settings. Yes, sometimes before you enter the pod, uh, you can actually s uh, set the settings to a certain level. And this way you will remember more or you will remember less. I think in my case, my settings are super low. I don't remember almost anything. I would say 0 0.1 maybe I remember, but I, yeah, my settings are very low. So, that's the, but it's okay. You know, I trust my decision from there. I trust and and believe that what I did and why I did that was for a reason. So I'm okay with that. Now let's listen to Athena Svaru sharing with us um, an interesting feeling that they Svarus have, and that is you know on top of on top of remembering a lot of past lives. And here she's going to be referring to their past life as Zvaru One. On top of that, uh, they are living everything in the present, as if it was the present moment. Especially in the Astra, you are living out those memories uh, in, in the now. And even though it's, it's, not, it's not a memory that they lived directly, it's in their memory and it's, it's hard uh, for them. So, so I'm going to leave you uh, with uh, this conversation. And, um, and then I'm going to see you again. <laughs> Enjoy.
originally in Spanish, March 2022. For example, here we see many human movies, for many reasons. I will not go into that now. But something recurrent is that some people come to live in a house in which sometime in the past there was a murder or a death. And we also see that as something that must be very common on earth, to live in an old house with a past that sometimes is not very good. But in the human mind, this was something in the past, that that's gone and we are here today. Now comparing it to what Mari, Minerva, Yashi and I were saying here yesterday, after watching a movie, that's why I bring this up, compare that human mentality with how we, Zvas, Zvarus, are. Neither Mari, Yashi nor I lived in that mountain house where Zvarupa Priyananda, Zvaru too, grew up. None of the three of us have even been there. However, we are deeply disturbed by that house. And it is because of memories of past lives, not even our own. We constantly dream or see ourselves there or imagine ourselves there and remember the whole place in too much detail. We know where Zvaruananda, Zvaruan, died, in our timeline more than, I don't know, more than 70 years ago. We are greatly disturbed by the memory of being in our room. I say our room because all three of us were the one holding that memory, Zvaru Papriyananda. The memory of being there, in the room, knowing that in another room, in the kitchen by the window overlooking the lake, our mother or our ancestor died there. So it's a constant sick feeling about the memories of that house. And that's in the past that doesn't even really concern us. However, we live it all as if it happened today. That is to say, all the linear or not memories of living in that house, the experiences, adventures that we have in the memory in absolute detail, even of the ash in the oil lamps. The spider fighting with its reflection in the frame of the bathroom mirror with transparent ceiling. The uneven floor, the white walls that show the texture inside the smells, the tastes of the water, the temporary pieces of wood that hold the glass of the kitchen window that were never replaced by definitive ones. All that and more. All living and remembering that with a little dead woman in the kitchen window. All simultaneously. That is the spider in the bathroom that gave me curiosity and joy is stained by the dead mother in the kitchen. In the window there was a long bed to lie down to look outside. But my long point is, everything happens now and more so if we are asleep in the astral. We do not create separation of past, present and future. The place is tainted, always, even before that happened. And going back to memories of that house, we always had like a repulsion to that place, like something was wrong there. And we would go to the bathroom at night with a certain fear of looking in that direction. We all remember that. And that was as children, as Zvarupa Priyananda, not as us.
Well, quite interesting, no? That's why I told you that remembering, remembering like many of you want to remember, it has its consequences. And sometimes uh, these are uh, not such nice memories to have, um, especially like Svarus, they are living everything, you know, as one in one moment in the present, like it was the case here. Uh, it is not always easy to handle. Um, I remember the conversation with Yaski once, uh, talking about memories, how actually remembering your past lives is helpful uh, when it comes to resolving certain patterns of behavior um, that had its root in the past. That's why many people are actually in those uh, so-called cycles and loops, sometimes even returning to the same identity, same life, because you know there's uh, because there is a root of something that happened that didn't get resolved um, in the past, and not having the access to that information, it's sort of like it's in your shadow, it's in your uh, subconscious, and it directs your destiny, as Jung says. But you not having the access to that, you cannot you know shed light on it. You cannot understand yourself. You cannot understand it and transcend it. Actually, that's what happens to the humanity at large. Uh, Yaski also mentioned that that's why humanity goes through these cycles and repeats uh, different uh, you know, historical cy cycles, resets happening over and over because um, it doesn't remember. The humanity doesn't remember. It doesn't remember the cycles. It doesn't remember its mistakes, even though for me there are no mistakes <laughs> in general. Uh, it doesn't remember the patterns. Um, and that's and that's what's happening. So not remembering, in this sense, could be viewed uh, as a trap because it doesn't let you transcend those issues whose root uh, is somewhere in the past, in the past cycle. And I'll finish this off with the ASCII conversation. She is also sharing her here a little tip of something that you can do. Something that you can do, and actually we talked about this before in a previous video. I'm going to leave you a link in the description box. This is about rewriting your past memories. Rewriting your past memories into something that is more in harmony with how you wish things could have been. And um, it's not necessarily, it's not really escaping from those memories. It's just you are choosing from the ether because there are several different types of pasts uh, for yourself and you are a convergence point of all of them. You are a singularity point uh, of all of them, not just one. You can kind of choose uh, what, uh, what past serves you most to explain you uh, right now. So I'm going to leave you with this conversation and a short, a short, short comment at the end. Conversation with Yaski, originally in Spanish. Question from the audience. Robert, just as we are affected by all the different pasts, are we also affected by the different futures? From the most expanded point of view, there are neither pasts nor futures, only ideas of how they would be or how they were. In fact, the uncertainty of what will or could come in the future, the fear of the future, does not come from that future itself, but from the idea that each person has of what that future could be like. You do not fear the future, you only fear your own ideas. And those are based on your so-called past experiences, from the linear point of view of your present incarnation. Strictly speaking, from the practical point of view, the past affects circumstantially your idea of how things are in the now, and how they would be or should be in the tomorrow. You just have to change the way you interpret your past, moving out of the I can't or they wouldn't let me mode, into taking control of your present. You should only focus on what you can do for yourself today and not worry about things that might not happen since it is only your ideas that dictate that. 
you can change your ideas of your past, for it is gone. Invent for yourself a different past, so you can change your present mindset and thus your future as well. That is as valid as foolishly holding on to a past that, according to you, is the objective reality of what was, when it no longer matters because it is no longer there. Let go of things that are anchoring you to past vices that you know do harm, such as resentments and guilt. But do not forget what they did to you and learn from what you have done too. But do not let it define you, because it doesn't have to define you, because that past is no longer there. And the only link that continues to bring that past that you do not like to the present is in your head. Even what others, such as relatives, are constantly reminding you about your real past, you can take it as one of many pasts, or as the idea that those relatives of yours have of what your past was, but not the one you subscribe to as to what you would like what your past would be, more convenient to your needs and interests. What you imagine as your ideal past is as valid and at the same time as surreal as the real past imposed on you by memories in your head and family nonsense. This is because there isn't only one past, but multiple pasts that converge to form the present, your present, whether you like it or not, whether you accept it or not. And if you can imagine something, at some point in the space-time ether, it happened. And it still affects you, because they are your thoughts, even if they are about you having pets on distant imaginary planets that had tails like colored umbrellas. There is no fixed reality, no real reality except for arbitrary and relative points of view. What makes up your life are only ideas, anyway. The idea of being realists is just another social construct that does not reflect universal cosmic objective reality. Whether humans accept it or not, from the most expanded and practical point of view it is so. They just lock in limitations by following agreements that are only ideas, not cosmic laws. What I will be doing is simply aligning myself to a timeline of the past that I did not live, but that I would have liked to live, yes? Because everything is in the ether. That past that I now want to create, imaginary one, already existed, was and is real. Yes, and by aligning yourself with that, you create another mental mode or attitude that in itself determines your reality and future. For my final comment in this video, I'm going to actually leave a message to my Tigetan friends. <laughs> if they are watching, I'm not sure they are watching and who is watching and when they will be watching. I think at some point they will. I want to leave a message because, as you know, my Taleka friends, I have instructions on my immersion pod. And in that immersion pod, the instruction is, this is just one sentence, because sometimes you can leave instruction for yourself. And my instruction is, I don't remember the words exactly, but it's the decisions to be made only from inside. Which means that me, from there, I, lay, I left myself the ability and the freedom to decide things from here. Having said that, my decision right now 
and my instruction <laughs> for my immersion pod team and my decision from the inside is please turn up my memory settings that's a, that's right this is my decision i thought about it and i am ready to remember more and to have greater understanding of things myself i'm talking about more technical things details of my life before so if that's what the instructions say say, say, say the decision is only from the inside well my decision right now is to have my memory increased that means please increase raise the volume raise the volume on my memory settings <laughs> if you are watching and i'm serious this is not, i'm laughing i'm smiling uh, but I'm, I'm serious so thank you very much toleka team and thank you very much everybody who are watching this video on memory a lot more could be said and will be said probably in the future for now this is it now next videos I would like to make I would like to because it depends actually on Daniel James and uh, if I receive his voiceovers in time I would like to uh, make the video on moon missions uh, this is going to be quite a long video on why we didn't go to the moon it's something that Robert did in the past uh, so I'm going to make this only in English and then I'm going to make an uh, interview with Dale Harder, short conversation, not interview, with Dale, a conversation with Dale Harder because he participated in the conversation about, uh, one of the conversations with Varu about the moon and why we didn't go and he was quite disappointed as you will see. So we're going to um, hook up with him and see how he feels about this uh, right now. Anyway, thank you very much for watching and um, until next time, of course. Bye bye!